Hello, Assalamualaikum people of Philippines. So I'd like to share with you this recorded, recorded lecture regarding conflict transformation and peace building. So what will be our expected outcome at the end of this uh, presentation? So this presentation is designed to engage you as a student or the participants on how to transform conflict and build a lasting peaceful relationship. This is a continuation of the foundation of what is peace and conflict are and how to appreciate its use to their day-to-day -day activities of their chosen professions and below are the list we as the student so hopefully at the end of this you learn something and with this presentation or with this module i will also review peace as well as its definition then we'll be able to know conflict as well as violence then the different terminologies of conflict or peace and how to transform conflict into peace so what about the so-called peace uh, you know very well in your master's degree, in your from your readings, there is no single definition of peace. It depends on the author and it depends on the situation. And having multiple meanings or a subjective or interjective concepts, this is defined distinctively by the different individuals and groups. Then a contested concept with no fixed meaning. Then peace, what is constructed by human minds and changes its meaning according to the different situations and the environment. So it really depends on persons or individuals or to the authors when they talk about peace. But we know very well, very well that there are already some authors or a lot of authors who define about peace. So there are three dimensions according to one of the American peace scholar and anthropologist by the name of Linda Groth. So, for her, there are the first dimension is peace as goal or vision, or what kind or kinds of peace we want to achieve. So, it's up to us, it's up to the situation that we are in. Particularly here in Mindanao, we have the so called conflict. Then, if we want peace, so it's up to us what we want to achieve about peace, or for us as peace advocate. Then, second dimension, according to Linda, Peace as means or processes used to realize the goals or vision. And we know what is our goal, what is our vision. So goal or vision or what we want to be or what we want to achieve when we talk about peace. It can be negotiation and it, they think this will be reported the models of uh, resolution, negotiation, mediation, arbitration, dialogue, reconciliation, peace education, military intervention, development, and the others. So that's the means or processes of peace, one of the dimensions according to Linda. Then the third dimension for Linda is peace as feeling. So the question is, how do we feel when we are peaceful? How do we feel when we, are at, when we have achieved what we envision as peace? Nowadays, in Mindanao, particularly here in our province, we have the, ba the BARM or the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. So if you'll be asked, how do you feel? At least, quote-unquote, we already achieved the so-called peace or the envision as peace. So those are the three dimensions according to Linda as American peace scholar and anthropologist. For Mother Teresa, I think you are familiar with this. Paulit-ulit lang siguro ito. According to, ma to Mother Teresa, we do not need guns and bombs to bring peace. We need love and compassion. I think gas-gas na ito. But we are reminded once again, what we need is love and compassion, not guns, not bombs. So another thing, works of love are works of peace. We know that very well also. Then we have to fast track this. Then the smile. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Paralejo, Ma'am Bing, sabi niya, smile. That's the word of the day. Peace begins with a smile. If you smile, 
we are bringing good vibes. I think with our own experience, kahit na hindi mo kilala pag nakasmile ka, you are bringing good vibes. And according to Mother Teresa, that's the beginning of peace when you smile. Then, if you want peace, or the art of peace, the art of living in peace is teaching peace. Then, Pope John Paul II said, if you want to achieve peace, you have to teach the so-called peace. Then, another saying of Mother Teresa, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Once again, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. For the sake of humanity, we are human beings. We are brothers and sisters and we belong to each other. Whatever is our race, whatever is our religion, whatever is our culture, we are brothers and sisters. We are human beings. But kung makalimutan natin yon conflict mag-start. Ang peace mawawala. Then with this uh, picture, if you'll be as what is peace, I think in your mind, you have already the definition. Kung walang gulo, ang saya ng buhay. The children, the environment, hindi nasisira. Pag may, pag may gulo, remember the six petals, sirang-sira lahat. They are interconnected. For Einstein, as a scientist, he said, Peace cannot be achieved by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. So understanding is very, very important in order to achieve peace. Another definition is part or peace is part of the differing way of life in many cultures like the Christian and Jewish. So for us, the majority of us are Christians. Some are Muslims, but Christians would say, peace be with you, peace be unto you. For our brothers and sisters who are Islamic believers, Assalamu alaikum. The response is, and also with you, alaikum wa salam. Still, you are bringing peace to one another. We are sharing that peace to one another. Then Irene and the Greeks. Then in Hebrew, it's Shalom. My familiar, Shalom. Then the Arab would say Salam. Salam is peace. Where also the religion of Islam came from Salam, which is peace. That's why Islam is also known as a religion of peace. Then this means being Roman peace, a Roman Pax or Roman peace. An understanding of peace that includes also justice. So if you want peace, there must be justice. Then peace is not only the absence of all violence, but it's also presence of justice and human security in all forms. I think you're familiar. So we move on. So there are two kinds of peace according to Galtong. The negative peace, which is also known as the Cold War. Then the positive peace, which is also known as the hot peace. So is there such thing as a cold war as well as hot peace? So that's the other terminologies used by negative as well as the positive. When we say negative peace, this is the absence of wide-ranging physical violence or the condition of war. So which means totally wala talagang war. What about this positive or hot peace? Promoting structural and cultural peace as it involves the development of society in which there is no structural violence or social injustices. That's more on the positive is structural, wala, uh, social injustices, wala. So the, that's a hot peace or the positive peace. So in this diagram about the negative as well as the positive peace, the absence of direct or physical violence, which 
that can be that violence it can be macro or a micro violence then nasa baba na aro yung the direct violence sa negative piece there's no direct violence like war torture child and women woman abuse so yan then under sa positive naman the present condition of the well-being not just a relationship but to the social, political, ecological, as well as economic. Then, no direct structural violence, like an example of that is the poverty and hunger. Then, pababa ng pababa, that also includes racism, sexism, then religious intolerance. I think you still remember that one when we had a discussion when I sent you the lecture about the different kinds of prejudice. Then, sa baba, of course, yung, if there is no ecological violence, there is positive peace like pollution, overpopulation, and the rest of the environmental issues. Pag wala yun, which means there is a positive peace. So, the same, another study of Nakamura was taken from Galtong. The negative, positive, once again, the absence of direct and structural violence, absence of personal and social violence is negative. The positive, the hot peace, the presence of well-being and social justice, the presence of fundamental human rights, and the presence of gender equality and racial equality. So, that's more on the hot peace. Then, you know very well about these four kinds or levels of peace. Personal or inner peace, our relationship to others, the social peace, peace to the environment, as well as to the peace to our supreme being or the creator. So these are the four levels of the so-called peace. Then in this diagram, it would start from within, yung nasa gitna, the personal peace. Like self-respect, at saka love, there is love hope within. Then it will radiate to others. So, yun yung social, our relationship to others, peace with others. Then hinay-hinay, it will radiate to, of course, do not forget others as well as our environment, which is papasok na sa global. So, now are they trending yung global problem, especially to our environment. Then, of course, peace to our manlilika, to our creator, to the supreme being. So, those are the four, four levels of peace. So, think about this drawing. 50 million people live in the countries at rest and uh, of instability and conflict. Then, 200 million of them live below poverty line. I think with this study, everyone of us would agree with this. All over the world, dami-daming pobre. At sila yung palaging biktima kung may karahasan. Then, at the heart of every conflict resolution, transformation, and peace-building skills lies the need for good and effective communication. I think you have a report also using effective communication to resolve conflict. Then, Communication is the key to everything in life. When our intentions get misconstrued, it is important to check the way it was communicated out. So that's why here, communication is really, really, really very important. Okay? And when you were still in high school or even in college, diba, there are two kinds of communication. The verbal as well as the non-verbal. And this nonverbal speaks a lot. Okay? Then, when there is an atmosphere that harbors room for constructive dialogue, conflict becomes less destructive and issues will become easily transformed. If there is a constructive dialogue, then conflict becomes less destructive. That's why dialogue is also very, very important. Okay, from your report, especially to the models of resolution, papasok din yung dialogue, I think it will be enhanced later with the report. So the drawing, 
hindi man malab malabo man siguro masyado, so war, the bombs, and the rest, gera. Yan, may conflict. Yan, what we need is peace. Because nowadays, our world, may problema. The chaos, grabe na. Everywhere. Now, the truth. The nature of conflict shows that it causes are fragile, it spreads like a wildfire, and it is ubiquitous. Then conflict, when it is ignored with no effective resolution, could become violent. That's why in this subject, hanapan natin talaga ng paraan itong conflict na ito para it will not spread, it will not escalate. Then, we want, all we want, we all want peace, but some believe in the use of violence to achieve it, and others use it to non-violence and an active non-violence. Yan, iniisip ng iba. By force, so that we can achieve peace, then yung iba naman, especially to Indira Gandhi, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, ano sabi niya, very fa popular, with this non-active violence. Then, when conflict occurs, relationships are broken. I think we would agree with that. Then, conflict is always mistaken as violence. And that's true. Kala may conflict, violence again. I think, siguro may mga lecture pa dyan, and you report later, that this conflict may positive as well as may negative na naidudulot or the effects, there are positive as well as the negative effects. Hindi lang talaga na negative lang talaga. Then what about the difference between conflict and violence? When I say conflict, conflict is virtually a misunderstanding differences healed by the separate individuals or over the goals. Yan. Then violence is pain. It's a pain inflicted on someone over what he or she stands for. It could be physical or psychological violence. Alam natin yung violence as well as conflict. Then, when conflict becomes violent, conflict becomes violent when deprivation becomes unbearable. Like for example, during the apartheid of South Africa, when Mandela took to violent against the white, when she was unjustly jailed and lost her family to the apartheid. So, ito si, uh, si Winnie. Talagang isinusulong niya na sana magkaroon ng uh, itong violent ma ma mawala ito. That's why she was unjustly jailed. Then, nawala pa yung kanyang pamilya. So, kung ikaw nasa kalagayan niya, talagang problema because of that so-called violent. I think in your history or from your readings, na daanan din yung ito si Winnie Mandela with her life, kung ano nangyari sa kanyang pamilya. Then, conflict becomes violence when fear of losing to course is great and cannot be part with uh, like someone who has amassed wealth through illegal means, we do deny to protect his wealth. Na. Ito na ngayon. Then, conflict becomes violence when perceived desire is constantly denied. Like the oppression of the vulnerable is triggered to violent expressions of their need. So, kaya nga, magiging violente yung tinatawag nating conflict. Then, conflict becomes violent when conflict becomes also when also we hope to lost over certain issues. Okay. Then, when dealing with conflict, like context, attitude, and structures are important as they determine its intensity. And with that, conflict becomes violent. So, there are terminologies about conflict like 
conflict suppression, conflict management, or subject conflict transformation, conflict mitigation. So, isa-isahin natin to conflict, conflict transition. Well, isa-isahin natin yan. Yan. What about this first, the conflict terminologies? The first one, I think you're familiar with this. I th if you still remember, I have sent you copies about the difference between the three. Resolution, management, as well as transformation. So, from the readings, sana by heart ha, alam natin yun. Management, conflict management, sa pamadali ang pagsabi, di ba? Para hindi ma-escalate yung problema, yung conflict na yun, paano mo i-manage? Okay? Then, sa resolution naman, of course, with that conflict, nagkaroon na ng resolution. Then, of course, this transformation, addressing the issues of conflict or changing the focus of issues around conflict constructively that disputants tend to appreciate differences and live by it as a result, build a peaceful relationship. Then in the mind, I think of Galto, uh, John Paul Lederach, remember, uh, Lederach. Okay, when we talk about conflict uh, transformation, we have to look at it at different lenses. Pag makita natin yun, then we address the, the root causes. So yun, hinay-hinay magta-transform yan. That's why we build the so-called peaceful relationship. It takes time to achieve this and needs a lot of creativity and innovation. By this, it is the duty of the mediator to seek beyond good ground and devise means to reconnect the broken relationship. So talagang, ang pangmatagalan talaga ito. Okay? As a mediator, be creative. Look for ways and means to reconnect the broken relationship. Then, another terminology, conflict management. I think from your readings, they are similar. We have to fast track, fast track on this. Then, the transition. What about conflict transition? Moving of conflict from one era to another era. As a result, conflict is prolonged. So, transition, palipat-lipat sa iba't ibang era. So, napoprolong yung conflict. Then, we have also the conflict suppression. This is when issues around conflict is not effectively addressed. Ignored and denied of attention, care, and resolution. That is, repressive action of the state in quelling citizens' agitation for the denial of basic needs is a suppressive conflict that could breed an undesirable outcome. I don't know if we can relate this to Ayuda. Isyo ngayon, bigyan tag 4,000. 1,000 lang muna binigay, may waiver pang pinapasayin sila. So, ang mga tao, the outcome, galit na galit. Bakit ganon? Sabi naman ng gobyerno kasi wala pang enough budget. So, therefore, tiis muna kayo total isusunod. So, minsan yung sabi nga, conflict suppression. Kaya nga, ang example dito, repressive action of the state in quelling citizens' agitation for the denial of basic needs. You know, that's their basic needs na makakain lang. Then, pag 1,000 ibigay, then hinay-hinay, later na yun, I don't know kung maibigay pa. So, that's the problem. Ang conflict nandoon, and the outcome, we do not know. Okay? Then, conflict mitigation. This is an effort to put in place to stop a conflict from arising or being, or being prolonged. So, yun, mamitigate mo na yung conflict. And the conflict resolution... Alam na alam ninyo yan. Then, we have also conflict termination. When issues around the conflict has been dealt with and it ceases to exist. Ah, ganda. So, wala na. Wala na conflict. Na-terminate na. Then, what about this conflict escalation? This is when conflict becomes a crisis and it increases in tempo of occurrences. So, nag escalate Dumadami itong conflict na yan. Then we have also conflict prevention aims to prevent 
the outbreak of violent conflict. Then, conflict settlement aims to end violent behavior by reaching a peace agreement. Then, conflict generator, another term, terminology, is one whose action or deed triggers conflicts, conflict. This could be intentional or unintentional. That is like activism could generate conflict instead of making better a deteriorated situation likewise of the case of the development intervention. Okay? So, yun yung example ng conflict generator. Another peace terminologies, peacekeeping, peace building. Sige, isa-isahin natin yan. What about peacekeeping? In your master's degree, alam na alam nito by heart. I think, Ma'am Cantaliopes, talagang paulit-ulit tong terminologies na ito. So, as a review, peacemaking, interventions developed to end hostilities and conflict by bringing about agreement through the use of diplomacy, political as well as military means as necessary. So, that's peacemaking. What about peacekeeping? It is an effort to put in place by deputants or mediators to end hostilities and seek ways of maintaining peace within the relationship. Then we have also the term peace enforcement. is the monitoring and ensuring a peaceful agreement by using force where necessary to keep parties in conflict in terms of agreement. Ah, sa atin, mayroon to, nangyayari ito sa atin palagi. May enforcement, peacekeeping, peacemaking, may ibang mga bansa, yung international, yung monitoring team, iba-ibang grupo sa isa na mga men in uniform, mga enforcement pumupunta para tutulong. Then we have also peace building, of course. Peace building, these intervention programs developed to address the causes of conflict and the grievances of the past and to promote long-term stability and justice in order to prevent the recidivism or relapse of conflict. Her intervention, the intervention here is to influence attitude and con context around the conflict in ways by which issues and questions will be transformed to establish sustainable peace. Each process could be involved series of activities that has been, has to be resilient. So, after the conflict, mayroong peace building. Dami-daming mga activities na ginagawa. Now, to transform conflict, one need to know that all individuals are motivated by needs, especially the basic needs, the psychological needs. Ano itong mga psychological needs? As well, the basic needs. Alam natin yun. First is freedom. Fulfilled by making choices. That, now, dapat malaya yung tao. Then, the belonging. Fulfilled by loving, sharing, and cooperating with others. Kaya nga yung matatransform itong conflict with the power. Also, fulfilled by achieving or accomplishing and being recognized and respected. Then, food and shelter, which is our basic needs. Not to go hungry and have comfortable shelter. Kaya nga sa atin ngayon, medyo wala ng gera, hindi na nag-escalate because of the warm. But people now are still yung waiting kung anong mangyayari sa warm. May extend ba? Or ano na mangyayari sa kanila? O okay ba yung magiging pamumuhay nila? Then pag hindi i-grant ang extension ng warm, what will happen? So, yun yung subaybayan natin. What will be the outcome of that? Okay? Pero personally, sabi ko, sana ma-extend ito para itong conflict na ito matatransform. Okay? Kasi yun yung inaasam-asam at inaabangan nating lahat ng mga tao dito sa Mindanao. Then, to transform conflict, when conflict arises, individual have 
isang salito choices. First, to contribute the conflict or to solve the problem. Then, conflict may persist. For example, when two individuals in a relationship have different ideas about how to belong or because one is more concerned with building the relationship or the other is maintaining a sense of freedom. Okay, that's one. That's another scenario to transform conflict. Another thing, to transform conflict, we all have to believe that dealing with conflict starts with us and the skill lies in us. Ganda, no? It starts with us and the skills, our creativity, we would start, our skill lies in all of us, especially us being peace educator, peace advocate, peace builder, peacemaker, and the rest of the adjective na nasa atin dapat. Then, to, to, to transform conflict, we need to dealt with it. Transform the conflict into an opportunity to make lives better and build positive relationship. To make lives better, not bitter, and build a positive relationship. Sana naman, ma-achieve natin yan with this warm. Then, when conflict transformation skills can work just as effectively in our families, classroom, or the communities, as they do in the situation of extreme violence and war, they also work within ourselves, which is everywhere, which is where peace begins. So, kung ano yung naranasan natin within our context, especially in the family, surely may conflict man dyan. Kung paano na naresolba, sana naman, it would radiate to the outside at saka yung tinatawag nating peace, nag-start talaga sa atin, then, makahawa sa iba para hindi talaga lalaki yung uh, conflict na yun. Kaya nga, they work within ourselves and which is where peace begins. So, it will start from within sa atin. Then, to transform conflict, it is important to know that behaviors will not change until the causes of conflict are dealt with or until it realizes that a change of behavior will meet the need agitated for. And I don't know with the agreement with this ball, kung lahat-lahat ba na-address all the causes, especially the injustices. But I think may mga provision yan doon si Densabol na halimbawa, kinuha yung land mo, so dapat may percentage, dapat ibabalik yan sa may-ari. Okay? Kasi that's one of the causes of, ma-address talaga yung the root cause of the so-called conflict. Then, to transform conflict, whatever the source, type of conflict, and questions, the fact that the human behavior is always governed by attitudes, Thoughts, feelings, and perceptions which determines the conflict intensity or termination. So once again, babalik talaga sa atin talaga. Babalik. Kaya nga, there is a need to change. Kung medyo itong behavior, may problema, sana hinay-hinay. That includes also attitudes, the feelings, as well as the thoughts. Like here sa atin, If there is a change of attitude and behavior, even the feelings of our leaders, the Bangsamoro leaders, surely when you talk about peace and development, makakamtan yun. Hindi, kung baga, yung mayaman sila, susunod sana itong mga constituents, yayaman din. Kaya nga, yun yung titingnan natin with this new government sa atin itong BARM. Na kung ako yung leader, na transform ako, marunong ako magdala, na bago yung pag-ugali ko, na wala na yung mga agam-agam or the reality na corruption, then lahat may ahon. Kaya nga, sabi natin, we cannot really separate peace and development. Hindi talaga pwedeng mahiwalay yung peace and development. So, yun, 
uh, sa infrastructure sa BARM ngayon, hinihintay natin yan kasi that's development then susunod din yung peace. Okay? Hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin, inaasam-asam pa rin natin. Okay? Para matransform itong tinatawag nating conflict. Then, to transform conflict, so, develop your thinking skills. So, it's a challenge to all of us. Then, think about the impact of your action before the conflict. Be the change you desire to see. So, ang bigat. Ang bigat yan. Pero sabi ko nga, we can do it. We can make a difference. Ma-achieve din natin yan. Pero we have to think our skills. So, it will start really from within. Okay? Then, to transform conflict, believe that peace is possible no matter the cost. So, it's really possible. It's achievable. Pero sabi nga, ang hirap. Pero we can achieve. It's possible to achieve the so-called peace. Maniwala lang, magtiwala lang. Okay? So, yun. Sabi nga dito, if you want to achieve that one, then you have to be compassionate. So, compassion is very important and care for yourself and others. Kaya nga sa mga kapatid natin, mga Muslim, every time they pray, the al fatiha Okay? The Lord is the most merciful, the most compassionate. And sana with that prayer, it will also radiate to all the disciples, to all the believers. Tayo mga Krisano, ganun din. We believe that our God is the most merciful and the most compassionate God. So therefore, as believers, dapat makakuha din tayo doon at saka dadami tayo. So therefore, sabi nga, what is important, you have the compassion. Compassionate, be compassionate and care for yourself as well as to others. And it is important to understand that the only person you can really control is yourself. And that can only be very difficult when you are emotional, you are in emotional turmoil. Oh, that's very psychological. So, tayo lang talaga nakakontrol yan. Kaya nga, dapat hindi na tayo mag-contribute, hindi na tayo mag-add para doon tayo talaga sa masasabi nating care for others, the compassion, the mercy for others. Of course, una ang kontrolin ang sarili. Ang sarili. Then, to transform conflict, be ready to talk about the issue and be ready to listen. Okay. Makinig. Listening is the beginning of understanding. Kaya nga, listen in such a way as to really get what is being said. Listen for the feelings behind the word. Kayo, oh, kahit na sa pamilya natin, kung may alitan yan, mag-asawa, o sa mga anak, o sa mga anak natin, tayo yung mediator, pakinggan nyo if they are sincere. Okay? Pakinggan nyo. And with that, yung listening for feelings behind the word. Kaya nga, non-verbal communication is also very, very important. Then, don't fill your mind with what you are going to say next. If the other person is rude, accuses or blames, try to avoid reacting. Be reflect back what you think you heard and act right regardless of how you feel. See beyond your pains and hurts on the matter. Kasi may mga tao naman talaga na ratatatatatat pataka lang hindi na nag-meditate, hindi na nag-reflect kung ano yung lalabas, yun na. Then kung ikaw yung nasa gitna, ikaw yung mediator, anong gagawin mo? Do not react. Hayaan mo siya. Uh, I had my experience. Ito, very sad, very tragic where when my mother met an accident doon sa Midsayap. Then, of course, that's accident. Matay yung nanay ko. Then, yung nakabunggo, including the parents, punta kami sa polis para masitel. Then, anong nangyari? First, in front of the police, uh, gandang usapan. So, ano yung pinag-usapan? Sila yung sasagot, 40 days, sasagot sa kabaong, 
at saka ang diniman ko lang dalawang sako ng bigas kasi alam mo na sa baryo kami mga pobre pag mamatay parang fiesta man din yan pakainin mo din ng mga tao mga paryente dalawang sakong bigas at saka dalawang baboy wala akong inanong kilo basta baboy alam niya yung kanong baboy so in the morning nag-agree then balik tayo sa afternoon kasi bayaran na para wala na kasi wala nang magawa das disgrasya dan pagbalik ngayon sa hapon turo-turo niya ako ikaw brother pangwartahan ko nimo ganito ganan lahat-lahat na panglalait sabi ko nga munti ko nang kung pwede pa lang puniton ko yung diploma ko sa peace ba transcript of record as doctor of peace pero ang ginawa ko parang basang sisiw parang basang sisiw nakinig lang ako sa lahat ng panglalait okay then nung natapos na sabi ko, pwede naman ako ang magsalita. Ganito na lang. Maganda yung usapan kanilang umaga, pero pagbalik natin ngayon, iba man o anong nangyari, parang a reverse psychology. Ganito na lang. Patayin ko yung anak mo, bungguin ko rin sa gasaan ko, then bayaran kita para may justice. Wala na problema. Then, ganun siya. Sir, sorry talaga sir, ganito ganyan. Teacher ka man sa anak ko sa NDU, sir, sir, mga pamangkin ko, ang bait-bait mo, sir. Kita mo yun? Pero pag nag-react ako na mainit siya, boom! Puputok yun. Magpatayan pa kami. Okay? So, talagang ang hirap. Talagang ang hirap. Kaya nga, once again, basahin ko ito. Don't fill your mind with what you are going to say next. Then, if, you're, if the other person is rude, accuses or blames you to avoid try to avoid reacting reflect reflect back what you think you heard and act right regardless of how you feel see beyond your pains and hurts on the matter so at this ako personal with that experience nagawa ko na pwede para yung conflict pwede ma transform okay pero ang hirap. So, parang it takes a process. Okay? Especially yung forgiveness. Sige. Then, to transform conflict, try to find some common grounds and build on this. Especially, acknowledge the differences. Ayan. Kung ikaw yung mediator, acknowledge, acknowledge the differences. Common ground. What is common to us? Tingnan mo, tingnan mo, apare-pareho pala tayo. Okay? Para maramdaman din nila that so-called common ground. Okay? Then, creatively brain, brainstorm and new solutions. Then, focus ideas to find a win-win agreement where nobody feels like the loser or leaves feeling humiliated. So, remember, I think from your report, paulit-ulit, pabalik-balik ito sa mga in-assign ko na report yung the win-win solution. Not win-loss, not loss-loss, but win-win. So, that's according to one of the effective habits of effective people according to Stephen Covey. Win-win. Nanalo ito, nanalo ito. So, walang natalo. So, walang malhumiliated. Kasi lahat parihong nanalo. So, yun yung purpose. Dapat, in order to transform the so-called conflict. Then, as a conclusion, basic psychology, psychological needs are at the root cause of almost all, all conflict. But when individuals choose to continue the conflict, no one's basic needs are fulfilled. So, nasa tao lang talaga yun. Gusto niya, Ayan, wala tayong magawa dyan. Then, transforming conflict takes time and it is a process that needs to be creative and innovative when intervening. There are, however, guide and terms to use to achieve this. That's why from your report, doon natin din yon madadagdagan, may enhance natin itong so-called conflict transformation. Then, as a guide, they are the peace building, the peace education. So, ito yung nakakatulong sa peace transformation. 
Med mediation approach, among others, than peace building skills and as, and as programs or activities as it is a wide and comprehensive way of addressing root causes of the violent conflict. For peace education, it is use of the knowledge of peace awareness to educate others. Then, for mediation, it is facilitated negotiation by neutral third party to bring among peaceful settlement among, between the disputants. Then, peace building basically an intervention or activities used to prevent the outbreak of violent conflict among groups or parties. As a skills, it involves mediation and reconciliation, joint problem solving, conciliation, and storytelling. Story then, reflection, what you are going to do. I think it would be good na manghingi naman din ako sa inyo na write a, a reflection about this conflict transformation and peace building using the guide questions. Okay lang ba? You can submit para at least may output din kayo with this recorded lecture uh, using this guide question. Siguro mga one whole lang. One to two pages. Uh, depende yan sa inyo. Para at least may maibigay kayong output din para sa ating class standing then reporting ninyo then para then siguro mas maganda i ano na lang you send this reflection paper through messenger na lang para madali ko i-check wag na sa email kasi i-download ko pa sa messenger na lang so the guide questions of the reflection how can you transform conflict you are involved or involved in or called to Mediate, then how creative you will be, then what lessons have you learned from the module itong na-discuss natin, and do you think it would help you shape your perception to conflict? When conflict, when in conflict, do you allow your emotions or take over? Then does emotions help in resolving the conflict? How do you think you can transform the emotions behind the conflict. So, these are just a guide questions of your reflection paper about this conflict transformation and peace building. I hope nagkaintindihan tayo. Then, since wala pa kayong final date, mas maganda na sabi ko nga from your report, so your reporting, magkaroon tayo ng face-to-face, -face, parang similar type, isunod-sunod natin. Then, to the point na Maganda kasing talaga yan pag harap-harapan. We learn from each other. Hindi lang yung one-man play. Kaya itong ginawa ko. Ah. Wala mo magawa kay because of the pandemic. Pero ang ganda sana kung harap-harapan ito, ang ganda yung ating intellectual intercourse. Okay? So, yun yung maganda doon. So, with that, I'd like to thank all of you. I hope you learned something. And please do this reflection paper with all this guide question. So, God bless us all. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Stay safe. Dalaygon ang Diyos.